Hello, Algebra 1 students. This is Mrs. Yowd. Today we're going to do Chapter 5, Lesson 6, which is all about graphing linear inequalities in two variables. Please open your journals to page 159. For linear inequality in two variables, it's just like a regular linear equation that we have been using, like y equals mx plus b, where m is your slope and b is your y-intercept. But instead of the equal sign, we're going to replace that with an inequality symbol, like less than, less than or equal to, greater than, or greater than or equal to. A solution of a linear inequality in two variables is any ordered pair, always written in form xy, that makes the linear inequality true. The graph of the linear inequality shows all of the solutions in a coordinate plane, and it divides the plane into two half planes. So a half plane is where you have, whenever you have a line, uh, it's going to divide the coordinate plane into two half planes. Here are the steps for graphing a linear inequality in two variables. So step one is to graph the boundary line for the inequality. You're going to use a dashed line if it's less than or greater than, and you're going to use a solid line if it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. Step two is to test a point that is not on that boundary line, and you're going to determine whether it is a solution or if it is not a solution of the inequality. And then step three is to, when you take that test point of the solution, if it is a solution, you're going to shade towards that point. When it's not a solution, you shade away from that point. Let's do an example in this notes area. We're going to graph y is less than 2x. So here's my coordinate plane here. And what we're going to do first is to graph y is equal to 2x. So that is going to have a y-intercept of 0, and it's going to have a slope of 2. So we're going to count up 2 and over 1. So we'll have a point here. And up 2 over 1 will give us another point here. And then we're going to also count down 2 and over 1. So we'll have a point here. And another point down 2 over 1. So we'll have it here. So now we need to draw the line itself. You'll notice that it is less than, not less than or equal to. And remember, whenever you have a less than or a greater than, we're going to use a dashed line. So that means that we need to draw a dashed line through these points. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now we need to decide which direction we want to shade. So what you want to do is pick a point that's not on this line. So I'm going to pick, let's see here, I'm going to go ahead and pick a, number, a point that's easy to use. A lot of times I like to try and use 0, 0, but since 0, 0 is on the line, I need to choose something that's not on the line. So I'm going to go ahead and choose 1, 0. So let's plug 1, 0 into the original equation. So remember we have y is less than 2x. My y number of 1, 0 is 0. And then we have my x number is 1. So 0 is less than 2 is true, because 0 is less than 2. That means that we are going to be shading towards this point. So I'm just going to go ahead and shade everything on this side of that graph. So a couple of things to point out. Remember, we talked about the graph of the linear equation. So this is my graph. And this line divided this graph into two half planes. So this is the half plane that is a solution. This is a half plane that is not a solution. Remember that the graph itself continues to go on forever and ever and ever in all directions. That means that there is infinite number of points that are solutions. Some points that are solutions, for example, would be 1, 0, because we already put that in there. So 1, 0 is a solution. Another solution would be uh, 3, 0. So 3, 0 is a solution. Also, 1, comma, negative 4 is a solution. So as you can see, there are many, many solutions to this problem. 
In the next page, on exercises one through six, we want to tell whether the ordered pair is a solution of the inequality. So all we have to do on these problems is substitute in your x and your y. So on number one, three is my x and two is my y. So I'm going to substitute those in. So three plus two is greater than five. Five is greater than five is false because it's actually equal to. So that means that no, this point is not a solution of that inequality. Let's take a look at number six. So here's my x and here's my y. So we have negative x, which is negative two, notice the double negative, minus two multiplied by negative three is greater than or equal to five. So to simplify, I have positive two plus six is greater than or equal to five. So we have eight is greater than or equal to five. This is a true statement. That means that yes, the point negative two comma three is a solution to that inequality. I would like for you to do number two, three, four, and five on your own. Pause the video and then turn it back on when you're done. For number two, I got yes. Number three is yes. Number four is no and number five is no. If you got anything wrong, pause the video and see if you can find your mistake. For the next set of problems, we need to graph the inequality in the coordinate plane. You'll notice that these first uh, set of graphs are all going to be either vertical or horizontal lines. So let's take a look at number seven. Number seven is y is less than four. That means that we're going to cross the y-axis at four and we're going to be horizontal. I notice that it is a less than sign, which means that I need to do a dashed line. Now I'm going to plug in the point zero, zero. Remember that's the point that I like to use as long as it's not on the line that we're graphing. So zero is less than four is true. So that means that we're going to shade towards that point. So that means that everything below the line y is less than four is a solution to this inequality. Let's take a look at number 10. This time I have x is less than or equal to negative one. So x is less than or equal to negative one means that we're going to cross the x axis at negative one. I notice that it's less than or equal to, which means it does include the line. So that means it's a solid line going vertical. Okay, so now let's plug in our point. Again, I'm going to use zero comma zero. So zero less than or equal to negative one. This time that is false. So that means I'm going to shade away from that point and it's going to go towards the left. I would like you to try these other horizontal and vertical lines on your own and then turn the video back on to check and see if you got them correct. Okay, please check your answers and see how you did. Double check and make sure that all of the lines that you did were either solid or dashed correctly and make sure that you uh, shaded on the correct side. If you made any mistakes, see if you can find your mistake. Let's take a look at number 14. Number 14 has a y-intercept of positive one, and it has a slope of negative one, so it's down one over one. I see that it is a greater than or equal to. That means that I need to have a solid line connecting these points. Okay, now I'm ready to plug in the point zero comma zero to see if that is a solution. So zero is greater than or equal to zero plus one. That is a false statement because it would be zero is greater than or equal to positive one. So that means that we need to shade away from that uh, practice point that we used. And so there we have our answer. I'm gonna do number 18. Number 18, I notice that six is easily divisible by three and also by negative two. So the easiest way to graph this one is to find my x and y intercepts. So if I plug in zero for x, I'm going to get three y is equal to six. So that means y is equal to two. So my y axis is at, my y intercept, excuse me, is at two. So now I'm gonna plug in zero for y. 
So if I do that, I get negative 2x is equal to 6. When I divide out my negative 2, I get negative 3 as my x-intercept. So that means that I'm just going to go ahead and put another point up here. So this is going to be a dashed line because I know that it's dashed because it's got a greater than sign. It's not greater than or equal to. Okay, so now I'm going to plug in my point 0, comma 0. So we have negative 2 times 0 plus 3 times 0 is greater than 6. So that's going to be 0 is greater than 6. That is a false statement, so that means I'm going to shade away from that point. And there we have our answer. I would like for you to do the rest of these problems on your own. Pause the video and turn it back on and see how you did. Okay, go ahead and check your answers. Make sure that you are looking to see if they are solid lines or dashed lines and that the line is graphed correctly and that the correct half plane is shaded in. If you made any mistakes, see if you can find them. For number 19, it says an online store sells digital cameras and cell phones. The store makes a $100 profit on the sale of each digital camera X and a $50 profit on the sale of each cell phone Y. So I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to go ahead and write what the X and the Y axis mean. So I wrote digital camera for X and cell phone for Y. The store wants to make a profit of at least $300 from its sales of digital cameras and cell phones. Write and graph an inequality that represents how many digital cameras and cell phones they must sell. Identify and interpret two solutions of the inequality. Okay, so we have $100 profit for each X, so I'm going to write 100X, plus $50 profit for each Y, and we want to make at least $300. So they want at least $300, which means 300 or more. So we're going to do greater than or equal to 300. Since this is written in standard form, I'm going to go ahead and find my x and y intercepts. So if I plug in x for 0, we get 50y is equal to 300, and so y is equal to 6. If I plug in 0 for y, I'm going to get 100x is equal to 300, so that means x is 3. So my x-axis is at 3, my y-axis is at 6, and I'm going to draw a line connecting them. Okay, so let's go back to our question and see what we wanted to do. It says write and graph an inequality that represents how many digital cameras and cell phones they must sell. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and shade the half plane that I need to do. So I notice that it's greater than or equal to. I'm going to go ahead and plug in my 0, 0 like I usually do. So let's plug in 0, 0. So that's going to be 0 plus 0 is greater than or equal to 300. This is false, so that means we're going to shade away from that, uh, from that point. Okay, so now we have finished the graphing piece. The last part that we need to do is identify and interpret two solutions of the inequality. There are a lot of solutions on here. I've got one here and I've got one here. There's just points all over the place. I only need to pick two of them. So I'm going to go ahead and pick 6, 3 as a possible solution and 3, 2. So my first answer that I chose is 6, 3. That means that the store sold six digital cameras and three cell phones. The other point that I chose is 3, 2, which means that the store sold three digital cameras and two cell phones. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.